So when I came into um, higher education, uh, I went to Cal Poly Pomona, and Cal Poly Pomona did not have a foster youth program. So transitioning into the university was very challenging. I didn't know about ILP services. I didn't know about Chafee. So I was trying to figure out how am I going to pay for this. So I didn't realize I could live and afford to live on campus. So I didn't. So it was it was challenging. Representatives from foster care and higher ed address the non-academic factors influencing students' success. The non-academic factors uh, that students may uh, need to be supported with could be crises dealing with uh, mental health issues or with bio families trying to reconnect. Finances is another big one that would essentially interfere with the education. The CETA program really does housing very well. Uh, through the scholarship, one of the requirements is to be housed on campus. The delegates listed their program strengths and weaknesses to compare notes and find solutions. One of the main things that our students really benefit from in our program is that we're a support service program, but we're also a scholarship program. So all our students that get accepted into Guardian Scholars at Fullerton get a scholarship that helps meet the, the full cost of attendance for the university. So we combine what the students come in with, with Pell Grant, Cal Grant, all of those um, funding that they already qualify for, and we tack on a scholarship. So um, that really helps the students. The Passport Scholarship is just has been really helpful for students and to build programs. We get um, an incentive grant to help support students on campus. We can enter in a student's name uh, or social security number and it tells us if they've been in foster care and if they're eligible for the Passport to College Promise Scholarship, which has been really helpful. One of the things I would love to see is for us to be able to expand and to grow the support for our students because we do know that there's more than the 40 foster youth that we currently serve. But by doing that, that also means we need more staff support. We also need to raise more fundraising dollars to be able to provide the same quality support that we've, this program has been providing over the last 15 years.